Let's start with the border crisis, shall we? For months, Congress has been unable to take concrete steps to find a real solution. But yesterday, House Republicans stood up, joined hands, and said, F it, let's pull a cheap stunt instead. For the first time in almost 150 years, a cabinet secretary has been impeached. House lawmakers impeached Home vote. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas yesterday by an extremely thin margin of one, 214 to 213. They think Secretary Mayorkas is not doing a good job, but they don't really have a case that he has committed what we are supposed to be looking for, which is high crimes and misdemeanors. Well, it sends a message that we're, we're not just going to sit by uh, while the Secretary of Homeland Security fails to do his job at keeping our homeland safe. Really? House Republicans? Really? That's grounds for impeachment now? Doing a bad job? <laughs> That's the standard you guys want to set, because you're not exactly crushing it right now. You can't pass legislation, you can't settle on a speaker. The most you guys have gotten done is one Beetlejuice hand job. And, <laughs> and even that wasn't to completion. <laughs> I mean, come on, I could have knocked out two before the curtain rises, you know? <laughs> but fine. They impeached Alejandro Mayorkas. I guess House Republicans think they can solve the border crisis by removing one Latino at a time. <laughs> so, congratulations to House Speaker Mike Johnson for finally getting something passed. Although, you know who's going to be pretty upset about that? Mike Johnson from four years ago. The, the founding fathers, the founders of this country warned against single-party impeachments. They said that it would be bitterly divisive, perhaps irreparably divisive for the country. I definitely won't regret that in a few years. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to French kiss a bat at the Wuhan wet market. <laughs> but let's move on to more consequential congressional news. Yesterday, Long Island voters had a special election to replace this guy. George Santos. Yeah. yeah, of course. Sure. Famous for getting expelled, dressing like a ventriloquist dummy, and <laughs> running away from all of America's finest journalists. <laughs> Run away from me all you want, George. You'll have to talk to me when I pay for that cameo. <laughs> Those are the rules. It's in the contract. Read the fine print, George. I'm coming for you. But the race to replace Santos wasn't just a local issue. It had national implications, because both parties were looking to see what the result would tell them about November. So, let's break down this race. In one corner, we had Tom Swazi, and in the other corner, we had Mozzie Pillip. Swazi versus Mozzie. <laughs> Even Dr. Seuss was like, you know, that's a little much. <laughs> now, looking at their pictures, you can probably guess which candidate is in which party. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> And you need to do better. <laughs> the white guy is Democrat Tom Swazi. Funny story, he actually held the seat before George Santos, but then he left to run for governor. And Tom, how did that go? I ran for governor and I got my ass kicked. <laughs> Fair, thanks for your honesty. That's the Democrats champion, Tom Swazi. I'm the guy who got my ass kicked. This man failed and got another chance. Uh, this is what sociologists refer to as a reverse female movie director. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Republican is Mozzie Pillup, and she contains multitudes. Mozzie Pillip is, in fact, a registered Democrat, though she was elected to the Nassau County Legislature as a Republican. Pillip, a mother of seven and wife of a Ukrainian immigrant, is an Ethiopian Jew. Born in southern Ethiopia, she immigrated to Israel, joining their military, the IDF, before moving to the United States. That's a big gun. <laughs> Uh, okay, an Ethiopian Jewish refugee immigrant Republican Democrat, mother of seven, <laughs> married to a Ukrainian who served in the IDF. And she's like, if you ask Chat GPT to write a bio based on all the news. <laughs> now, if this race has national implications, then understanding what issues resonated with voters is crucial. And in Long Island, one issue stood out. Both candidates made the case that they are tougher on immigration. I'll work across the aisle to do what our leaders haven't, secure our border. Is At the same time, the two attacked each other on the issue. Because Tom Suozzi repeatedly weakened America's borders. Guys, 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 relax. There's plenty of migrants to demonize for the both of you. <laughs> okay, 
So both Swazi and Mazi made immigration a big part of their platform. But just as revealing as what they were running on was who they were running away from. Mazi refused to ask Trump for his endorsement, and Swazi politely asked President Biden to stay the f away. Would you want to campaign with Biden? I could pretty much guarantee that the president's not going to be coming to campaign here. <laughs> but this is a huge seat. I mean, don't you think the president, you know, could be helpful in it if he came out here? I don't think it would be helpful, just as I don't think Donald Trump would be helpful to my opponent. And this race is really very local. He's declining the president's offer, like how you decline your dad's offer to babysit. <laughs> so sweet of you, Pops, but we don't want to put you out, and Billy really doesn't want to play with your keys for three hours. <laughs> He's 15. Uh, of course, Swazi is right. Uh, a Biden visit would not be helpful, especially to Biden. <laughs> you don't want Joe having to learn any new names right now. <laughs> His brain is in a sort of one-in, one-out situation. <laughs> Tom Swazi, nice to meet you. I'm Ono. Oh, no. <laughs> so that was the candidates and the issues they ran on. And last night, we found out who had the winning strategy. Democrat Tom Swazi easily winning a special election in New York's 3rd Congressional District, defeating Mozzie Pillow by eight points. Thank God. <laughs> Let me just enjoy this for one more minute, OK? Yes. Let me enjoy this. Tomorrow I start the world's worst job. <laughs> yes, Tom Swazi won the race handily. And now the question is, what does it mean for November? Of course, Donald Trump has his own opinion. Former President Donald Trump blamed Phillips' loss on her lack of loyalty to him. He said that though he boasts an almost 99% endorsement success rate in primaries and a very good number in the general elections, this very foolish woman didn't endorse me. MAGA, which is most of the Republican Party, stayed home, and it will always, unless it is treated with the respect that it deserves. I stayed out of the race. I want to be loved, in quotes. I'm not sure what that I want to be loved in quotes is. Um. You don't know? You don't know what a bitter old man alone in his room tweeting into the abyss, I want to be loved, the night before Valentine's Day means? Haven't you seen a person make a Freudian slip with his thumbs before? And as for Democrats, they were gifted a blueprint for 2024. Joe Biden, heads up, the path is clear. You can win re-election in three easy steps. One, get out there with a strong message. Two, tackle immigration head on. And three, don't campaign with Joe Biden. <laughs> for more analysis on last night's election, we go to Troy Iwata out in Long Island. Troy. national implications of this election are? It was a local election on Long Island. <laughs> so, none. I mean, a local election with national implications. I mean, when you look at it, if you... Stop it! <laughs> Who cares? A Democrat winning in New York is not exactly shocking news. It's like, it's like finding out vaccines make you gay. We know! That's why we're taking them! Right. Okay. 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 But Long, Long Island is a good bellwether. It's middle class, it's suburban, it's diverse. Yeah, those are really good points. But also, it's Long Island. <laughs> Why are you looking for a lesson from people who voted for George Santos, root for the Mets, and idolize Billy Joel? We shouldn't be learning from them. <laughs> we should pity them. Okay, no. I actually really like Billy Joel. Of course, we all do, but we're not supposed to be proud of it. Okay? He's a guilty pleasure, like reality TV or cocaine. Okay? I, I just don't think we should be looking for insight from an island that named their hockey team the Islanders. The Long Island Islanders. It's not exactly a bunch of Hemingways out here. Okay, okay, noted. So, so, so nothing to be learned, just not a thing. Okay, well, I, there's one thing I'd like to learn, how to get home, okay? <laughs> the Long Island Railroad is confusing and scary. Who is Ron Concoma? 
Jordan, please send me an Uber. Okay, we'll send you an Uber. Troy, you want everybody.